So my my most recent release is Creole Soul. It came out in 2013, and it was a it was a a mashup in a sense of of so many of my different musical influences. I, I didn't want to I didn't want to put them in different columns anymore. I just wanted to be like, this is me, this is who I am, this is what I like, and and the name Creole Soul came from the fact that. You know, being the the definition of Creole is born in the New World, and by New World they're talk, specifically talking about the Americas, and so the Creolization goes from many different stand. It goes from the mixing of Caribbean music with with the music that they call jazz. It's the it's the mixing of of it's the mixing of band sounds. So it's the mixing of the you know their R and B influences and their all of these different root groups, specifically Haitian voodoo, Martinican, Bel Air, Guadeloupe and Goka, um, reggae from Jamaica, Calypso from Trinidad. So it was all of these different things mixed up into, you know, it was like a big pot of soup. I'm gonna put some kale in there, I'm gonna put some sweet potatoes in there, I'm make a couple of dumplings, put some corn, put a piece of pigtail, put some chicken in there, and, and just watch it bubble and see what. So and that was that album. And it was fun to see the band grow through that album because it was a chance for everybody to put in their own their own musical ideas. Um, so that was Creole Soul, and since then we've we've recorded we've recorded twice. Um, we got a Christmas album coming out in December. No, no, probably before December. Probably like September, October, sometime. Um, we don't know the title yet. It seems like it might be called a Creole Christmas because it's like in the same vein of just, and it's not your average. I think there's one Christmas carol on there. I think there's like Santa Claus is coming to town. The rest of it is, is Christmas from the way I know it growing up, which is Parang and Calypso's about about the holidays, and so and there, there's some songs. There's some some songs by a, a Trinidadian composer who I think of as like the Trinidadian Jelly Roll Morton, a man by the name of Lionel Belasco. Who was half Sephardic Jew, half half black, and um, he wrote some great melodies that were very popular at Christmas time. A lot of them are waltzes, and so we recorded quite a few of those for for the album as well. And then I'm I'm compo I'm in the process right now of composing um, a San Jose Suite, which I was commissioned by Chamber of Music America, funded by the Doris Duke Foundation, to write this suite which connects. It connects San, it's three San Jose cities, San Jose, Trinidad, San Jose, California, and San Jose, Costa Rica. So it's kind of like we go, we basically go like up Central America and into the Americas from the Caribbean. And it's basically about, from three different perspectives, how, how three different New World um, places deal with colonial, colonialism and post-colonialism with, with respect to the indigenous people the African, the African culture, which came about because of either slavery or post, post slavery and conquest, specifically with respect to like Silicon Valley and San Jose, and with respect to you know the new developments in Costa Rica and the, the so it, each 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 place has a different their different levels of each, and so I spent I spent my New Year's in Costa Rica between. On t both sides, I went to Cahuita, which was which was a part of uh, it's just in the Limon province, which is where which is the only place in Costa Rica until 1949 where blacks were allowed to live, and um, they came there in yeah they came there in 1872 to to build a railroad, and um, they stayed and it's a Caribbean culture because they came from Jamaica and all over the West Indies, and they sing calypso. That's their music. They sing colors and they speak English with a Jamaican accent. It's fascinating because the culture was I. But I'm talking about who don't speak Spanish. You know what I'm saying? And then we drove a sea all the way back through San Jose and then back down to the other side to the Pacific and then went up into the mountains to the Brunca tribe, which is one of the one of the eight indigenous tribes of Costa Rica left. And um, we spent. I, it was unbelievable to see like a, a, just an indigenous tribe. Maintaining their traditions, they have a festival called the, the Juego de los Diablitos that we saw, where they 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 have an artistic symbolization of their preparation for fighting the Spanish during the Spanish invasion, 
and it, it's over days to, to signify the fact that they fought the Spaniards for 40 years. And so the first day is the, all of the devils, because the Spanish called them devils. Like all over, the, all over the New World, the Spanish called the indigenous people the devils or the savages. And so they make masks to look like devils. They're these ornate wooden masks that are painted with horns and horns coming out the mouth. And they put these masks on and they're, they're dressed in these crocus bag type costumes. They come out at night. That's the night before the war. And they, be, they go to the houses of the people who passed away during the year. And they do a, 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 a tribute ritual at each house, each house. And the next day they start fighting the bull. The bull signifies the Spaniards. It's a, it's a, it's a made bull. It's, it's actually a person in a bull costume. And they fight. It's, it's extremely, it's brutal. They're just bashing heads. And they do that for two days straight. And then on the, on the last day, they kill the bull. And so that, that, all of that is, and then in May, I'm going to go up to San Jose, California to meet with the Ohlone people. And, and then from that, I'm going to write my next original project. Etienne Charles. Gotcha.